Hi guys, my name is Jude. I'm from HeadFi.org, and uh, here we have a panel of five guys that have very interesting insights, so I want to get right to them uh, with only an hour. Uh, but uh, what this is about is the future of portable audio, and I think this is an interesting discussion, especially at a hi-fi show, uh, because you're seeing news stories like Google releasing, um, I think they're called the Pixel Buds, that will do real-time translation, so essentially version one of real-life Babelfish. Um, it'll translate up to 40 languages, um, while you're wearing them so that you can talk and listen back with somebody. And I think that's absolutely fascinating. Um, but the question is, where does something like that fit in with what we do? Because so many of the news stories you're seeing uh, about uh, portable hearing you know, devices that we listen with um, will involve things like this. And then, of course, there's wireless. But before we get into all that, I wanted to, oh, anyway, so I want to discuss where we all fit in as premium audio enthusiasts, as audiophiles, um, with this constantly changing landscape now. And it is where some of technology is uh, pointing and being packed into. It's, it's fascinating stuff, but where do we fit in to all this? So um, I'm going to let the panel introduce themselves. OK, so my name is Nelson Tenuta from Sony. And uh, so well, we are, uh, I'm so, uh, working for Sony for so, the past 27 years as a headphone designer solely. And uh, so I'm, I'm the uh, leader of the uh, so sound quality team. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Fong from uh, Hi-Fi Me. I'm the founder and the CEO of Hi-Fi Me. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Shankar, uh, founder and CEO of Odyssey. We make uh, planar headphones and uh, microphones in uh, Orange County. Hi, I'm Tyler Hertzens, uh, editor-in-chief at innerfidelity.com, <coughs> stereophiles sister site for headphones. And I write about these guys. <laughs> 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 I'm Mario from Biodynamic. Uh, I'm globally responsible for our whole headphone business. Come out of an engineering background, being at Biodynamic since 14 years, having a long time in R&D, developing the whole Tesla range and so on and so on. And now I'm here talking to you. All right, so uh, Tile recently did, you know, Tile's been on top of discussing where a lot of this is going. And he seems to be really fascinated, as am I, by the, the wearables, the hearables market. Um, so Tal, you recently did a piece, a video, yep. um, on Interfidelity that covered this. Can you, for those who haven't watched it, can you try to encapsulate what you said? It was, you probably need more time than a couple minutes, but. Well, I'll try to make it real, real quick. <clears throat> the bottom line is, is a, that, that uh, just like in the computer world, there's a lot of convergence going on amongst people who make uh, transducers for your ears and it comes from places like high-end audio but it also comes from hearing aid people and people who are making noise canceling headphones and so on and so forth <clears throat> briefly the uh, uh, Bose currently has a product that's available that's called the Hearphones, and it has a microphone array that allows them to focus where they're receiving sound from, uh, from and provide noise canceling from elsewhere so if we're sitting at a dining table talking back and forth, there's a lot of crowd noise in the background, all I have to do is look at you and your voice is ex ex amplified essentially and the rest of the, the world is damped. And this can, this can be taken to extreme levels <clears throat> in the sense that what they're essentially being able to do now is take the incoming sound and then make various modifications through it through DSP and then give you, present you with uh, a, a new sound field around you. And a quick example would be firefighters going to find people in a burning building. The, the, the characteristic of the sound of a fire is semi-known, you know, it's sort of a certain sound. And they're able to noise cancel the sound of the fire and accentuate somebody going, help, help, find me. <clears throat> Another example would be uh, blind people walking down the street. You have a pair of headphones on that have cameras on it and AI and all sorts of stuff. And as the, the blind person is walking down the street, it'll say, this is the, uh, the Rexall drugstore on your left, across the street is the shoe store, the light is green, you can go ahead and walk, so on and so forth. So you, you could provide for a blind person situational awareness. You take it another step further, these things could have goggles. Not only could you translate the audio, but like uh, uh, Google Translate on your phone, you could point it at a sign and it changes the, the lettering so it's in your language. So I could wear one of these headphones, 
I could ask a, a, a person in Japan a question. They could answer me. I'd be able to understand them. It'd be English. I could look up at the signs, and all the characters would turn into, you know, Akihabara, Tokyo, whatever. So that, <clears throat> so this that that's the 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 vision of uh, what uh, can and might be done. There's also the. 3D audio and, and mixed reality where you can mix, uh, you can have sounds coming in, but then you can also synthesize additional sounds. So as you're walking around, you could listen to music, but you could also have surround sound going uh, for something else. So a lot is going to happen with these, with these new technologies. What I find interesting, though, is like, for example, the firefighters or like right now we have occupational headset types, right, with uh, pilots. Um, but my guess is, I hope they're not listening to music up there too much, but uh, when the pilots are flying, you know, they're wearing the headsets, they communicate with each other, they communicate with tower. Um, but my guess is when they are listening to music, if there are any audio enthusiast pilots, actually I know of a few that are actually here um, at the show, but uh, that are friends, but they, they, they would probably change into something else. So that's my question. This is an interesting question. So, you know, having a translation feature on an earbud is really groovy, but the question is, when I'm ready to listen to music, if it's not, um, if it's not really going to be the best thing that I can listen to music through, am I going to be willing to take them out to switch? Because this is where I, I think there's going to be this dichotomy, right, between um, all this tech pack stuff that's interesting and compelling and, and genuinely useful, like real-time translations, but when I want to listen to music, I'm just wondering if I'm, you know, I think a lot of the people in this room, I think, are going to want to swap it out, um, is my guess. But. I, I, I don't want to hog the floor, and, I, and I'm, I'll kind of shut up after this, but, the, <laughs> but there's, an important, there's an important aspect of this. In order for you to synthesize convincingly sounds coming from different directions, uh, one of the things they have to do with these headphones is they have to reconstruct your, e your ears because now you've got something in your ears and it's not going to sound the same. So they have to be able to reconstruct the cues that are coming from the real world outside you and, and also the synthesized cues. <clears throat> and uh, that's extremely complicated, but it requires very, very high fidelity to do it. And since high fidelity is required to produce the cues, then you can switch it to a mode where it's high fidelity for the music that you're listening to. So I, I do believe these devices um, will be able to be made very high fidelity as well. Yeah, I hope. So, so now we have an interesting mix of companies. We have Sony, a, a very large company, um, who I could see engaging in a lot of these technologies. I mean, already your LDAC Wireless is, is going to be a part of Android O. So clearly, uh, we have Sony. Then we have Odyssey, Hi-Fi, Man, Biodynamic. These are companies that, um, like Sony, serves uh, high fidelity in music, um, but maybe less likely to dabble in some of that technology. So I want to start with now and ask, at Sony, you're working mostly, I mean, I know you well. You're an audiophile. <laughs> so I mean, big time. Um, so my question is, you're leading the group with the headphones. How is this all? Working in yes. Uh, so let me talk briefly uh, about the digital direction. And uh, so one of the uh, the uh, Sony, uh, it, as you know, the big company. And so I was we our uh, main target is divided into two different group uh, two two groups. Uh, not uh, not much difference, but the one is audio file, of course. And uh, so, uh, we are we have uh, ha we have been uh, doing uh, some uh, the work for the audio files to to give you our uh, the high quality headphones, especially targeting on music. And uh, but the uh, other uh, so other uh, uh, group is uh, really is average consumers, because the uh, so, uh, sometimes uh, average consumer is. Uh, we will be so happy with this high quality music, but uh, one of the uh, the sort of aspect, the important aspects for these customers is uh, uh, it's also lifestyle product. And uh, as we know, uh, as you know, uh, we most of our our sort of stories started in 1979 with the Walkman. Uh, Walkman is the first music player, that stereo music player that you can bring out to the outside. And uh, so, uh, as uh, as like this, uh, Sony need, uh, Sony has uh, it believes that we need to so contribute to this uh, lifestyle of these uh, customers. 
And uh, in in this way, uh, what uh, what we are so focusing on is uh, uh, because the so as the uh, the Charles mentioned a little bit uh, before, uh, because headphone needs to be as a lifestyle product. And uh, of course, uh, so while walking down the street and you hear it outside and with the uh, over the music, that kind of this experience also. And uh, in in if, uh, to finally, so headphone needs to be a uh, uh, interface to, uh, to the uh, network, internet world, net, network uh, to to be uh, to make yourself uh, as a part of the network. And uh, sometimes, uh, because the, there are many many information is uh, uh, on the internet now, and uh, so probably so when you are working down the street and to, and to go to the uh, some uh, direction, and uh, so uh, and uh, probably the. Uh, uh, that the headphone, the future headphone, will uh, guide you to the so, uh, the restaurant without seeing the, and uh, so uh, the, uh, not uh, not uh, put the input the, the, the password to your cell phone, and uh, probably automatically uh, you uh, the headphones will uh, guide you to this restaurant. That kind of the, uh, the, the uh, more so convenient uh, uh, convenience uh, pro uh, the headphone needs to dedicate. Uh, to uh, make the uh, more so convenience uh, for the uh, artists and the customers the, that we are working for, and uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, that the necessary technology for headphone is to be as wireless, because we are lately, as you, as you know, uh, Apple eliminated the, the headphone jack uh, from this uh, their cell phone, and uh, probably uh, they are. Uh, Preparing the two different ways to so connect to the headphones. One is a uh, uh, lightning, and the other is uh, wireless. And uh, also, or uh, as the uh, this uh, this fact uh, mentioned, the probably the wireless uh, function is going to be the, the future of the uh, necessary function uh, for the headphones, and uh, as well as. Uh, the, what, what we are working for is a uh, better noise cancellation of the headphones, because the probably uh, the, you are in a uh, you are always exposed uh, to in a uh, very huge uh, noises uh, when you are uh, uh, working on the street, and uh, so probably that is not necessary uh, to listen to every, ev everything, uh, because the, uh, you, uh, to, to protect your hear hearing ability, and uh, also uh, probably you will be more so comfortable uh, with the uh, lower noise level. And uh, so this is uh, one of the so intention that we are uh, working for. And uh, so finally, so uh, uh, we are targeting uh, to give you a uh, this is a uh, quiet environment, uh, such like a uh, so, uh, concert hall, and uh, so uh, we and uh, we that we that so that's kind of the high various noise cancelling uh, the performance. Uh, you can uh, you can enjoy this music more clearly than the past. Yeah, I, I mean Sony's shown no reluctance, especially lately, to pack technology into their headphone. Their their latest, the WH one thousand X M two. Got to work on those names, but uh, uh, the the WH one thousand X M two the the, the um, has the best noise canceling I've used. It still sounds fantastic, and it uses the two best wireless protocols I'm aware of right now for music transfer, which is LDAC and Aptex HD. I don't, I mean, other than your headphones right now, I don't know that there are any other headphones that have both. Yeah. Um, so my question is, do you think some of that technology will then go? Will you continue to? I mean, that's. I would. Say, I would argue. I would say that's arguably an audiophile quality headphone. Doesn't sound as good as the very best headphones you make, but when you're on an airplane, you know, it's 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 fantastic. Or when I'm in the city streets, will you see some of that technology move into the more audiophile products, or or will you continue to keep those pretty separated? Uh, yes, that's a good question because the yeah, so audiophiles uh, needs uh, some more more uh, higher quality audio, uh, but uh, uh, currently so. But, uh, in this consumer space, uh, that the, uh, are many many argument has been done to adapt to this uh, internet these days. But uh, uh, probably so in this very new near future, so we need to talk about the how to create this, uh, uh, the better uh, sound quality product to uh, for the, for the audio file because the uh, one of the are uh, uh, the stream uh, from the internet side is uh, uh, streaming. 
and because uh, probably uh, you are the, uh, the audio file, and so you are store you you are storing the many many so high res audio file uh, in your in your home, uh, but uh, uh, downloading is a problem because the, the bandwidth is always limited, and uh, to download is such a huge is a music file it needs time. And uh, so probably uh, to streaming will solve this 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 issue, and uh, probably some, uh, you you see uh, some of the uh, audio manufacturers is uh, no uh, the, our exhibitor uh, is showing with this title, and uh, probably so, uh, streaming the high resolution music and so listen to the, to to it in at a high quality uh, higher quality is the uh, uh, problem uh, is an issue uh, for. Next generation argument. Uh, so I think we'll probably continue to see the technology move into your other products. Yes. So another guy that's not been shy about putting technology in his products up here with respect to DSP is Shankar Thiagasamadram from Odyssey. Uh, they recently announced DSP support in Rune. So there are DSP presets for every one of their models uh, currently available. Uh, and I know that uh, DSP uh, in, you know, is something that we discuss a lot. So Shankar, I mean, where do you see all this from? Some of you play on the highest end of the audiophile space, um, but you're also trying to incorporate some of the newer technologies. Yeah. So, so the way we see it is, um, if you think of the, uh, audio, file, the audio market, the uh, headphone market as a bell curve, um, the long tail is where the audiophile um, industry uses, and they are willing to make compromises on uh, wireless or not having wireless and things like that. But um, going back to the initial thing that you mentioned, where do we see um, the market shifting? With all the new technologies coming up, people will get more used to the creature comforts that it will be pretty hard for them to switch from a a uh, headset that does translation, okay, to say I am going to carry two headsets with me, one for my um, audio file version as well. So I, we think, at least from our, you know, from Odyssey's um, perspective, that the market will move similar to what happened with the iPhone and the camera market. So you will still have the high-end cameras, um, the audio file uh, headphones, where people are willing to not have the Wi-Fi to transfer the um, photographs, but the uh, low-end um, cameras, basically mobile phone based or driven from a mobile phone, will need all the creature comforts like translation. Noise cancellation is going to become pretty much commodity because of all the chipset uh, improvements coming up. And the middle market between these two, which exists today, I think will shrink. And the bell curve will become a sharper bell curve where you go to the tail, you still have the higher end versions, but the um, uh, creature comforts will become more and more important. And going back to what Tile said, especially with 3D audio, we introduced a headphone for Oculus last year, and we did a lot of experiments, and we found out that the moment you have a higher fidelity headset, the 3D imaging is much, much more convincing and much more immersive. The second part of it is the head tracking. What happens is, is when you try to emulate 3D, um, even simple 5.1 on a headphone, uh, like all the simple gaming headphones, your brain um, tries to figure out, OK, the sound is outside your head. But when it turns your head, even small movements, the imaging collapses back because it's not very easy with, your, uh, with the uh, head. The brain gets confused between the head movement and the 3D imaging that the headphone is trying to project. So I think those kind of things will become more important. And there is a place where we can take the high fidelity headphones and utilize them to get a better experience. To do that, we have to make sure that the cost structure works in the lower end. Once we can pull it off, we might be able to take a lot of the high fidelity headphones and utilize them for these new um, upcoming stuff. So at least that's where we see uh, we see you know we are not very shy about putting new technology, and we'll probably continue that in our products. Um, um, and I mean, it's very fascinating with uh, all the new things. But one thing that we have spoken to, I've spoken to Tile in the past also is you can easily see what next generation things are going to happen by the chipset vendors. And there is a whole lot of convergence happening in the headphone chipset market that's going to help um, these headphones make it both high fidelity and also feature set. The Qualcomm, Qualcomm just announced a new version of their platform last week where they're going to enable 
noise cancellation uh, by default. So it's going to pretty much have any entry level headphones can with USB C will have noise cancellation yeah. as long as you can and put the microphone. Yes, so. both feedback, feed forward, and it's a low latency module that they're running directly. And they also have a separate pipeline for audio file. They are doing even DSD on their new Qualcomm chipset. They just announced support for DSD. So it, it's it's pretty fascinating that many of the features that we thought of as high end are going to be pretty much available on every Qualcomm uh, phone. And um, so, like I said, we have to, uh, we think it will become almost all the entry level headphones will have these features. So it will be a pretty sharp bell curve. But you're even, you're even supporting the DSP in your highest end products, Correct. Yeah. LCD i4, mm -hmm. LCD4. Um, I mean, these are high-end products and you're doing DSP. Now, you were previously playing mostly in the frequency domain with the, with the cipher cable. Yep. Are you starting to move into playing with imaging and things like that in the other DSPs? Yes, we are. Um, so so we, we do not think um, DSP is anything to be shy about because there's no new features that are going to help us with the um, feature set that's evolving with all, all these chipsets. So one of the things that in the next version of one of the players that we are working with, we will have uh, 3D emulation available where you can adjust for the head size, the ear size, so you can project the headphone. We think of it as a different flavor. We, you know, we try to make our headphones as best as possible. So it's not like you know, we are trying to fix problems with DSP, but we think of we can actually offer a different flavor for other customers. And in the other side of things, we are pretty active in the uh, pro audio market with all the studios. So that's actually a substantial amount of our business and it's growing. And in that, one of the things that they have requested uh, is they, people have different headphones, even different models of our headphones in different studios, and they want to QC it because more people now listen to music on headphones than on speakers. So people want to, you know, even the biggest sound engineers want to QC their head. Uh, music on headphones. So if there is um, Metropolis Studios in the UK, they master a track, they send it to Larabi in LA, they have different sound engineers, they want to check it. How do you really make sure that these sound similar? So um, years ago, I was involved with the Digital Cinema uh, Committee and we created something called a reference projector because there is DLP, there is LCOS, there is LED based uh, display systems and all of us, all of them had different color uh, models, uh, different RGB uh, specs. So when you send a single movie to the theater, how do you try to make sure the color is consistent? So we created uh, something, it's actually part of a SIMT spec called a digital reference projector. And part of it is we translated everything to a, um, uh, a, we did a transformation from RGB to XYZ space and we created this reference projector. Our um, DSP things that we are developing with Rune and with the plugins is something similar to that. At least that's how we think of it. We have an Odyssey reference sound and a reference room model. So what we are trying to do is to see if we can create that in the plugins so you can enable that and you can have the same consistency if possible across different headphones when you QC. It's you know, sometimes audiophiles have a little bit of an allergic reaction to it, but the pro audio industry seems to be much more uh, uh, encouraging of some of these things. So that's one of the reasons we created the plugins for Pro Tools, Logic, uh, Cubase, and a whole set of uh, tools. So. Yeah, so as an audiophile, I mean, a lot of what you're saying is scary, right? Because, yeah. you know, but at the same time, it's encouraging. Like Tile said, you know, at the end of it, if you want to get it, uh, uh, get the process, you know, get the, the effects right. Resolution is important, and that's what you're saying because you're building still. You're 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 building the the, the headphones to acoustic to be as acoustically sound as you can, and then you're applying the effects later. You're not correcting, so none of none. Yeah, so none of and that's and that's a big difference. That's very important, I think. Yeah, yeah. Not, not using DSP technology to make bad gear sound good, but to use DSP technology to be able to use really great gear and add additional benefit to it. Right. Yeah, I was with Tyle at the Headphone Technology Conference in Aalborg, uh, AES, uh, last year, and uh, they talked, I mean, it was that was encouraging for me because you can tell they're still trying to solve uh, real acoustic problems uh, related to all of this. So that's good. That was good to know. 
Um, but so, so that's interesting because Smith Research, for example, have, have any of you tried the Smith Realizer, that surround processor? It's an incredible processor, but they've never done a demo with, with mediocre headphones. Yeah. They've used Sennheiser HD 800s, they've used Stax headphones. So again, I think that speaks to what Tyler and Shankar are saying. Uh, now, Mario, at Biodynamic, I mean, you are one of the most, have been one of the most, uh, you know, traditional yeah. um, audio companies. And then out, <laughs> yeah, and then you did, you did, now, but you have Aptex HD headphones. That was surprising to me. I didn't expect you to be one of the first to come to market with that. And then you also have uh, one of your catchphrases in your press release was something like the future is without wires or wireless or something. And, and so clearly you're... Well, perhaps without analog wires. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my, I'm curious to know about how you see all this as a more traditional company. Then I want to talk to Fang about that as well. I mean, for me, two things are sticking out these days. When we're talking about portable audio, uh, first thing is, we don't have to sacrifice an audio quality anymore. I mean, I remember the days of my youth, I always had to make the decision I want to have audio in good quality, so I had to stick at home with my stereo and my speakers and my full-blown headphones. And if I was, was outside, then I had my Walkman or later on my Sony Discman. Thank you. Um, the earbuds that came with it, they sounded like crap, but I was happy because I was having music. So it was always like, Okay, when I'm out, I can have music, but it doesn't sound good. When I'm at, at home, then it sounds good, but I have to stay at home. And that order is gone right now with all the technologies we have with, like you did a great job with LDAC, we have Aptex, Aptex HD. So are the companies really taking what is standard today, like Bluetooth and enabling it to sound great and to not have sound degradation anymore? Also, digital connectivity, when it's, remains wired is a big chance and huge improvement. So when Apple came out with the iPhone 7 first, not having a phones check, I was really angry with Apple. Yeah. I, I remember we had that dinner at yeah. CES. But we had that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we were debating what was going to happen. So, yeah, I was so did we. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really angry with, with Apple. But then um, thinking over it, uh, I considered this also to be a, a chance for our industry. Because, I mean, what, what is the big difference between using that phone check here on the iPhone 6 and the lightning check? The big difference is when using the phone's check, I am always stuck to the sound quality of what they built inside. When I start using lightning, especially as a full-blown USB interface, <coughs> I have no limitations anymore in audio quality, right? I can get sampling rates up to 384k out of that little check. And so rethinking what Apple did, I hated them for doing that, but I also consider this to be a big chance for our industry because it moves away of the limitations of the phone's check of a smartphone and enables us to do really high-end things with, for example, the lightning check or like the micro USBs or whatever you have on other devices. So USB is probably one of the most common connectivity on all the devices we use, USB and Bluetooth. So, so and that's the one topic for me of our days. When it gets portable, we don't have to sacrifice an audio quality anymore. I mean, driver technology and everything is there already. That, that's an important thing. We don't have to sacrifice the sound quality anymore. The technology is there. The second thing that is really sticking out to me, and that is all about the talk we're having we have had here during the last 30 minutes probably. As soon as we have internally with working together with R&D, I, I normally say, well guys, until a couple of years ago, our headphones were like stupid devices. There were two loudspeakers with a cable on it and that's it. But as soon as we're moving into that digital world, having Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth chips inside, which are also full-blown DSPs, right? CSR chips, for some of the full-blown DSPs inside, our headphones can really get intelligence. So they're, they're not that stupid devices anymore. And for, for us at Biodynamic, the question was, for what benefit will we, we be using that capability that we now have in the headphone? Because our headphone, it has a DSP. It is connected to that device. They can talk with it. Uh, with each other, and that device even is connected to the rest of, of the world via internet. So that's a huge new field of 
possibilities we have there. And for us, the question was, what are we going to do with that? To, because for us, as I said, it's not about using those technologies for making bad headphones sound good. You can do that, but that's not the point for us. And so we came up with, I mean, Bose is doing some very clever things. You at Odyssey are doing some great stuff. We are now doing things like, which you perhaps heard, we, we work together with a company coming out of audiology field. And with our new wireless headphones, for example, we have a very clever capability inside in the DSP of personalizing sound for you, not just by doing an EQ curve or something, but really by doing together with an app and full-blown hearing test <coughs> to really adapt sound reproduction to you. Because what was al always missed out in the picture is, a headphone, a loudspeaker, the headphone ends here. But that's not where the hearing starts. You have the, your ear canal, your drum bones so are always what the ability of your personal hearing was missing in that picture. Because the sound of the headphone was the same for, for everybody. And when we have a look around here, there are like perhaps 15 people wearing glasses. Yeah. So if you put all your glasses on the table and compare them, we would find out that none of your glasses will be the same. Because none of your eyes are the same. And we're doing something against this by using glasses, but we're not doing something against it for our hearing. We have hearing aids which are just restoring the ability to hear something, but we're not adjusting sound reproduction on, on the ability of your personal hearing. This is, for example, a topic we are took care of now, being able to do hearing tests, customize the reproduction in the headphone, so it's not something that runs on an app. We are really able to run that on the headphone for you. And that is something that is one of the topics be, besides many other topics in the industry. What I say, we can use those features for creating additional benefit, not by making bad products sound good, but by really adding benefit to the experience. And this is the second thing where I see a big chance in the future. Yeah, I mean, coming from biodynamic, again, that's, you've been for the last several decades very traditional, and then that, to see you kind of exploding out into this that's saying that I think change is obviously coming. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you're right, and it's, it's really no offense to us to say we're late on the digital train. Um, for us at Biodynamic, it's always about best audio quality. And so we were struggling for a long time on hopping on those things like Bluetooth. But as soon as we saw those technologies coming into a range where we had the feeling that you don't have to sacrifice an audio quality anymore. That was the point when it was for us like, okay, great, now what are we going to do with it? And our thoughts, what we're going to do with it, are right now in the products that you're starting to, uh, that you seem to come out from us. You know, there's leading edge and bleeding edge, and if you adopt too early, you get cut up. So <laughs> maybe not such a good idea to adopt too early. Yeah, we, we did that mistake sometime in the past. Yeah. Having the first digital microphone, having one of the first, like, bean rolls around headphone systems with, with heads on. Right. Yep. Which was highly recognized by the industry, right. but... Too no, early. Too early. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a bit early. no big success in terms of sales, but there you go. <laughs> now, now, Fang, you, you're obviously a very devout audiophile. I mean, they're, they're, and, and you own, you, you founded and run Hi-Fi Man. Uh, and I, I would say a, a company based on traditional hi-fi values. Where do you see all this discussion playing out as the future of hi-fi man plays out? Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> well, um, in the previous a couple of years, um, there, um, in China, you know, I, um, I moved back to China from 2011 when I graduated. So um, there are a whole bunch of big companies like Beidou <coughs> or Chihu, those super huge companies. They want to talk to um, the traditional hi-fi people, and they want to make the hi-fi great cell phones. Uh, they want to make the smart speakers. Um, they want to make it sound best, but they don't know how to do it. So, um, that is why you can see that you know in some Chinese cell phone brand, some cell phone models they use the either the uh, ESS deck chip or AKM deck chips. 
Um, see, however, however, there are some quality wise, as I said, um, comparing to Apple, it might not be better. The reason is that the analog part uh, is, is, is something they have to do better, but they are not. They're using a very good chip, but the sound quality, the analog part, they don't have a lot of know-how. Okay, so however, however, um, I personally think if the personal audio in the future want to be smarter, um, the most important part are two things, C and C. The first C means cloud. Streaming is a kind of cloud. And the, for that part, uh, there are a whole bunch of vendors can do that for you. So you can find a, a, a cheap vendor, you can find a, uh, uh, the app vendor to, to do all the work for you. But for the other side, the, the second C is compact. Compact what? Compact hi-fi. So think about this. So you want to make a pair of smart headphones. You, can, you want to use the headphones to connect into the cloud to get streaming signals. And you want, that you want to have the headphones sound the best of the world. So there are two ways you can go. Um, without, without, a, without a stupid cable, you will have to either use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Okay, so however, the Wi-Fi things, in, if you want to put it into your, your headphones, the Wi-Fi consume a lot of energy. And <clears throat> the Wi-Fi signal is so strong that it will easily damage your analog circle. Okay, so um, the other way is Bluetooth. Um, I'm very happy that there are um, people doing um, the uh, high-res level uh, Bluetooth right now, like Sony, LDAC, and some other uh, vendors as well. Um, so for that part, it's also, uh, it's also okay. So <coughs> we can see that there are Wi-Fi or smart speakers, and there are a lot of uh, Bluetooth speakers and Bluetooth headphones. The, for the digital part, it's okay. I mean, it's, it, it can go to high risk. However, there are, on the market, there are so many, most of, actually most of the, the uh, Bluetooth things, they are going to very low price. And uh, um, um, also, the digital part support high risk. In other words, support to 24 bit, uh, support go, the frequency response can uh, theoretically go into around 40 kilohertz. But the speaker part, it can only go into 15 kilo because the speaker is so small and um, um, it cannot go to um, a full range of the high res. Um, also, <coughs> Um, the amplifier part and the filter part of the DAC chip. Um, if you want to make it perfect, it requires a lot of energy. So it's almost impossible to put them into um, small wireless headphones. So this is what we're doing right now. Um, so hi fi man right now is actually, we actually spend a lot of time and uh, money on, uh, working on the uh, the small things, the compact hi-fi solutions. Um, the, uh, for example, for example, right now um, our player becoming smaller and smaller. Uh, before they said, you know, do Chinese manufacturers can only make the brakes. Uh, brakes means, you know, the players big like this, right? So, uh, however, we, we figure out a way to to do something small, which is like the CPU and DAC chip they, together, they only consume the energy like an op -amp. Okay, and uh, I, I, I have a feeling that in the future that uh, portable player will get into the headphones and will become uh, uh, wireless and easily connect into the cloud. And at the same time, at the same time, the objective sound quality, objective listening experience, um, also still can get into the hi-fi level. Um, 
So in this processing, the, um, the coding is a problem. You know, the, uh, there's a lot of uh, product using the Android system. Um, say, but I, I, I think the Android system might be too big for the future portable things. So, um, so what we are doing right now is these, the, uh, the, the our system is coding by C. So it's, there's no, let's say it's, there's no system. It's just a, just raw code by C. So uh, it's very small and um, uh, the same energy so that you can put that. The, the, the final goal is to, to put everything into the earphone. Um, and uh, we also make the uh, progress on the on this small speaker driver. Uh, we made a one inch and a half um, dynamic speaker. Um, the frequency response is about a 70 hertz to 35 kilohertz plus minus 3 dB. So, um, so I, I think that will actually give the potential um, to making the Bluetooth speaker, it still looks like a Bluetooth speaker, uh, not a bookshelf or home stand speaker. Um, but they can give the uh, frequency response or, or the hearing experience um, in the traditional hi-fi level. Yeah, the micro speaker market's a whole nother discussion. That's a very interesting one though. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're, so we're running low on time. I wanna get to q and I'm just gonna, stay, I wanna just express a quick thought. Like I, I'm encouraged by the fact that these guys are working on uh, improving their products, not necessarily using technology solely for correction or even for correction at all. And that's exciting. Change is coming. It is a little scary for audiophiles. I do think we're in a room full of holdouts. I can't, I mean, I, the fact that you're even here at the show, we've already shown that we're willing to do and go to great lengths to, uh, in service of fidelity for music. Um, and I think that will continue. Um, I am as interested in the new technology as anybody else. Um, I'm usually the first guy ordering, like I got the Broggy Dash, um, the Hear One. I mean, I'm ordering every new little thing that comes out, but when it comes to, and these are interesting things. I can check my pulse, I exercise with them, um, and they track my activity level. But when it comes to listening to music, I still am looking for my very best headphones. And I think there will come a time where the convergence will be such that I can't maybe avoid all of it. But I think we will, we're probably looking at a room full of holdouts here. But anyways, uh, questions now for the panelists. Oh, Jonathan. So uh, one of the things that I've been doing lately is, uh, well, it's finished now, but I was on a standards committee for PSAPs which are now approved, these are personal sound amplification products or basically non-prescription hearing aids, and now they're legal. The FDA has decided that they're legal. So, you, uh, so it opens up a market to people like you to introduce hearing aids that are not $3,000 a pair, but you know, something more reasonable. And, I, and uh, you know, several years ago, there was the European Standard BS 50332, which limited uh, volume for head, headphones and the earbuds and things like that. So I see where regulation or standards create markets or hurt markets. And I was wondering if there's anything out on the horizon that maybe I'm not aware of that you guys see as being an opportunity or something that may restrict a business down the road. Oh, yes. Uh, so regarding the uh, 50332, uh, the new token about it, so the days of our sound pressure limitation on right. the European market. And uh, yeah, it is uh, always a challenge. Uh, to, for us, uh, it is always a challenge because the, uh, to uh, give the, uh, the audience a uh, better quality and so limited volume, maximum some volume level. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, to, to, for us, Honestly speaking, this is a disaster. <laughs> yeah, because the, uh, so there are so many, many people. But because the, uh, the, uh, the regulation determined by it as a 50332 is uh, to, uh, uh, to limit the volume to down less than 85 decibels. And, uh, oh, no, no, it's 100 decibels. Uh, it, uh, it, it's a really... Which, which, by the way, is crap in fact of protecting your hearing. 
Yes. And uh, also, but uh, oh, this is based on uh, our, the, the, uh, the probably uh, WHO or the study. Uh, the, the human, the uh, uh, maximum sound level should not be uh, ex uh, exceeded 85 five decibels uh, in 40 hours in a week. <laughs> And uh, this is uh, the, the uh, just a dedicated uh, uh, made from this uh, study has, is just for to determine the working condition for employees. Right. Yeah, therefore, uh, probably uh, so instantly, so we have more the capable uh, uh, ability to stand on uh, the highest sound pressure level. Uh, therefore, probably in the future, uh, we hope to uh, the, that that regulation has been more a little bit uh, <laughs> slower. Uh, than the current than the current situation, yeah. And, uh, but uh, uh, sometimes, uh, probably say, all of the uh, the audio files wants to increase the volume. We need to push you up <laughs> and push your uh, emotion up. And uh, sometimes uh, we want to have uh, some uh, window <laughs> and hope for for that kind of the purpose in the future. Thanks, Jonathan. Oh, we have another question. Hi, I'm encouraged to hear the various manufacturers talking about adopting uh, Adaptex HD. Um, I just wonder if you can get some comments on the spread of uh, players uh, and indeed a, uh, mobile phones equipped uh, with Adaptex HD. Adaptex. Adaptex. So uh, the question was about the spread of Adaptex HD. Sources, in, in Sources that will, will conform to that standard. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, uh, I speak regularly to the guys at Qualcomm because we were one of the first to implement the, their codec. So at the moment, this, this spread isn't very big, but um, from what I know from the guys at Qualcomm, they're spending much efforts right now to spread it out, and they normally, for introducing a new codec, they calculate it like two to three years to spread it on the market. So as far as I know, we will see many more devices be seen coming. Up. We will see many more devices coming out with Aptex HD. I think it will also be included. I hope I am not telling something wrong. It will be included in Android development kit. Um, yeah. So I, I cannot give you all the information I have from Qualcomm, but as if they don't lie to me, we will see some movements on that, having more sources with Aptex, supporting Aptex HD. Yeah, Apple's lack of support for Aptex, LDAC, and all that has me considering the switch to Android for the first time since I got an iPhone. So, but uh, Apple has had always been consistent on AAC. Right. Yeah. So uh, all in all iPhones, you have had AAC. Right. Android was much more difficult because there was no uh, easy way of even selecting. But with Android Oreo, you have the option to select Aptex, Aptex HD, or, or, uh, or uh, LDAC. So I think that uh, with Oreo, um, we will see much more, um, in, at least in the Android market, much more uh, stabilization. If you guys haven't heard, there, I mean, there are probably opportunities out in CanGem to, to experience Aptex HD headphones, um, and it's, it's worthwhile if you haven't done so. Uh, it's encouraging. Or LDAC with Sony, but uh, they, they don't have their, uh, uh, that here right now, but um, uh, that's also exciting. A question to the colleague, <laughs> colleague from Sony. Will, yeah. will you stay exclusively with LDAC? What do you, what, what do you mean then? Yeah, at the moment, you use LDAC exclusively as the only coding in your devices, will you open that up or not? Or uh, yes, so we're what trying to, be doing? yeah. <laughs> Actually, we, uh, we cannot open it, all the information to, to uh, <laughs> uh, the confidentiality. Uh, but uh, yeah, we are offering these uh, many party to, to apply to LDAC. Uh, and uh, it probably, so some of the, uh, my colleague uh, is, is working to very uh, much simpler uh, so, uh, uh, licensing program. Will you let but, other codecs get yes. into your products? Yes, we do. Uh, actually, so we are. I would say all most of these recent our headphones are is implementing these AP uh, Aptex HD as well. 
Aptex and Aptex HD as well, because the, uh, we need to receive all the e <laughs> signal so, so from the cell phone there. So then you also see the Sony players yes. having Aptex HD? Uh, actually, uh, the, the, uh, currently, uh, the answer is no. Our workmen don't have uh, sort of, uh, capability to transmit the signal in the Aptex, because, but, rather, uh, but uh, we do uh, uh, our, offer the signal with the uh, LDAC. You know the, the Sony players together with our Aptex HD headphones. Yes, will because make great hair. Yeah, for us, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for us LDAC uh, sits uh, on the top of these uh, codex because the uh, LDAC can handle up to 96, 24 bits. 96 kilohertz because the higher sampling rate, you know, this is the very unique feature for the LDAC. And the Aptex, the Aptex can uh, handle to 48 kilohertz. Oh, we have another question up front. Um, it seems like an easy way around that would be to get more uh, Bluetooth uh, portable DACs out into people's hands. I mean, currently there's only a couple on the market and like the XP10 and Creative has a couple, I think. But that would give you kind of a universal solution to basically use any headphone you wanted with practically uh, any Bluetooth technology you wanted. I mean. It would seem that's, uh, that, that would be the, that's the, that speaks to that holdout nature of us, right? Like, because most people probably aren't willing to carry, you know, an extra device, even though we are. Like if you look at a lot of the portable rigs you see in CanJam, they're pretty involved. But just even adding another box is probably something that, that, that you know, the, the mass market isn't going to adopt. But this audience probably would. So Centrance is showing a pretty cool device if you. you know, so, so to answer your question, so if you look at it earlier, you need a Bluetooth receiver chipset, a, a chipset for ANC, a chipset for battery control, and all these things. But because of Apple uh, moving to W1 and consolidating everything, we also see other chipset vendors doing something similar. So more and more chipsets are going to come in the market in 2018. There are some, some of them are already sampling, where the, they are all, what for lack of a better word, I call them system on a chip fully, right? You have multiple cores. Some one chip I saw even has eight cores for headphones. You can pick and choose what you want to run on these things. For one core, you could just uh, give it to Bluetooth processing. One could be for DSP. One could be for something, you know, battery ma ma regulation. So as the chipsets consolidate, it's easier to build systems. The bigger problem also is for sub $500 headphones with all these features, people think of them as gadgets that you have to buy every 18 months or so, and they might not be willing to spend a whole lot of money on them. They want the sub $300 price point in many of them. So for companies to be always doing this with different chipsets, with each one having its own life cycle is problematic. When the chipsets consolidate, it's very easy. You jump on one company's bandwagon, like Qualcomm or something, and then you can build basically headphones to their uh, schedule and keep on with the trend. Especially as big headphones become gadgets that have smart features, it's very important to choose one or two, you know, platforms that you can build things on. Uh, Qualcomm, as I said, introduced a new platform with DSD support to uh, Bluetooth, CSR, with, because Qualcomm owns CSR, all the Aptex is already there. Um, but also, these companies want to make sure some of those things are proprietary. So Qualcomm, I don't see Qualcomm licensing their Aptex chipset to be run on chipsets from Apple running W1, right? Or even other companies like Connexent that makes chipset for other headphones. So I think there will be some things that as headphone vendors we have to pick and choose and bet on things that you think will win over the long term. Um, it's impossible to support every one of them, but with people like Apple, you are forced. So CSR is forced to implement AAC because Apple will only support AAC. Sometimes they can um, they have the influence. Uh, LDAC, Aptex, Aptex HD are all competing. And it'll probably be difficult to have all of them in every single model, but you'll at least have one feature that's good that you could pick and choose. So, well, um, you're, you're talking about the Bluetooth DAC. So there are one thing important is that the Bluetooth module 
Um, so it's so if it's that not that easy to use external deck. So there are most of the Bluetooth modules they have the deck built in, and for the audio file components, normally we are not as big as Sony, so um, it will be difficult for us to talk to the Bluetooth vendor said, you know, hey, I want to change the internal deck to the external deck. I want, I want to use a, a beautiful sounding deck instead of your internal deck, which is sound not good. But normally they don't do that for us. Because of just the volume considerations. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so that is the limit. So, and that limit is actually, is, uh, is doable. It's totally doable, but it's the, the limit is difficult for this market, for the niche market. Yeah. Well, thanks, Rat. You guys were out of time. Uh, this is an important topic. I know it's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting one, but the, the audio enthusiasts of the future, are, they're, they're listening through headphones, so this is all very, very relevant. Uh, the two speakers in front of a living room market, that's, we're still into that. I know a lot of us are. I am still as well. But this is so relevant to the future of audio because this is how the generations coming up are currently, unless something changes, this is how they're listening to music now. Um, so this all counts. So thanks, guys, for everything. And thank you guys for coming.